As most pilots or shade tree mechanics will probably recognize, this is a carburetor and this is ice. And for pilots flying an airplane like this, one without fuel injection, when these two come together, the results can be very disturbing. Carburetor icing can occur any time of the year, even on a hot day. But the most prevalent times are during cool summer and early fall days with high humidity or visible moisture in the form of haze or rain. The Venturi effect of air passing through the carburetor lowers the temperature considerably, causing water vapor to freeze and eventually without correction can cause the engine to quit. The first sign of carburetor icing may be a slight reduction in the RPM of the engine or a loss of manifold pressure. By applying carb heat, a flow of heated air from the exhaust melts the ice and eventually allows full power to return. It may be necessary to adjust the mixture to smooth out the engine, so consult your flight instructor for proper usage. If you do have carburetor ice, be prepared for a further loss of power when carb heat is initially applied, as water from the melting ice is drawn into the engine. Be patient and allow the ice to melt. Power will be restored in a minute or so. If the carb heat is turned off before the ice is completely melted, the engine may fail entirely. And with a cold exhaust, you won't have enough hot air to melt the ice and restore the power. A check of the pilot's operating handbook will list the recommended times to apply carburetor heat for your particular aircraft. Anticipate and check for carburetor icing by applying carb heat periodically as an anti-icer rather than a de-icer. And finally, be aware that the use of motor vehicle gasoline or MOGAS can dramatically increase the temperature range for the occurrence of carburetor icing. Carburetor ice can be fatal, but learning to recognize the signs of carb ice and knowing the steps to take to prevent it can work towards making every flight a safe and enjoyable one.